Uh, today's agenda is today we will discuss about the identity, the security part we will discuss, and also we will some explore the part of the N unit test cases, which is as similar as the MS test and the X unit which we discussed earlier. Optimization techniques in .NET Core, how we can host or publish a .NET Core application with the Azure. Some TFS guidelines, Git setup, how we can do Git, how we will use the Git, their commands to check in and check out our codes. Some C Sharp 8.0 new features and the reflection. That is the today's topic. So this is almost the final topic of the .NET Core. So let's start first with the identity. What identity is? Identity is basically how we will do auth authentication authorization in the application and how we will apply the security in our application. So basically what it did is if I go in my this is the doc that we have created. So identity we can apply in our application based on the token based and the cookies based we can do in our .NET Core application. .NET Core provides the inbuilt feature of the identity for what you have to do in the identity you have to this is my application i am closing all the documents and collapsing all so first what you have to do you have created the architecture you have set up everything first what you have to do you have to install the package just go in the dependencies packages just right click click on manage new get packages and install the package of the you have to install two packages first microsoft.aspnetcore.identity second microsoft.aspnetcore.identity dot entity framework core then you have to inject that packages in the container and the pipeline so go to the startup.cs file here this is the similar project that we did and you have to use the app services dot add identity to add it into the container ioc container then you have to use this in the middleware pipeline in the configure method like this uh, app dot use identity okay then if you want to create in the same database like we did before then you can use the same else you have to you can create a separate database for the security like in my app settings my configuration settings i have created another connection that is dream part security connection context connection here you can see there is i have established a connection this is my server name, my database name, my username and the password. Here you have established the connection. Then you have to make a context class of this. So here I have created the context class. This is the dream part security context. In that class, this is my just context class I have created and enable the options. Here I have created one model one model that is email templates i have injected that and in the email templates i have some properties yes these are the some properties now and here you can see i have used this as the identity db context i have inherited this context class with the identity db context which is the part of the assembly microsoft.aspnetcode.identity.entity framework code. Okay. Next, what you have to do? You have to, if, if you do, and like this is the, uh, yes, now you are injecting that context class for using their app setting, options.use SQL server connection string, and you are using this connection that we have placed in the config class this one and then use the migration assembly that you want to 
use now you have to do the code first approach for this for creating the table like here you can see in my database i have created the database identity now first i am removing this Clicking on the tools, package manager console, add migration, and giving my one any name you can given and your context. your context name minus this this is my context name hit enter so what it will do it will start your creating your migration folder and your migration now you have to update your database update Context file name. Enter. So here you can see. Here you can see the migration is done. What identity is do? I'm refreshing this. This is the identity database and it will create the seven default tables of the identity. These are the seven default tables. That is first is ASP.NET role claims, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET user claims, ASP.NET user logins, ASP.NET user roles, ASP.NET users and the ASP.NET user tokens. Mostly we are using the ASP.NET users, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET user roles. These are the main tables. We can use. All are the main tables, but we can use these tables. I will tell you what are these tables. And this is the template that I have added in the data set in the context class. This is the email template. So here you can see that I have injected that part in the startup.cs file. This is the how we can we are connecting and in the while we are adding the identity this is the class that we have added this is the class and here we have used the identity property that is identity user which we have inherited in that class so what it it will do here i have added two more properties so it will add two more properties in this table Here you can see the birth date and the favorite toy. So in the default tables, how you can add your own properties. Now this is the identity role. By this you can add your roles into the into the identity. Adding the entity framework stores. This is the context file name, which is for the security and the default token provider we have added. Now moving to the next. Now how we will use this is the this is how we have installed the NuGet packages for the identity. OK, and how we are injecting the identity into the context file into the uh, container into the middleware how we have injected okay now how we use this identity into our application like suppose first of all identity by default uses two main services okay they are using two main services first one is user manager second is sign in manager so i have created a controller class auth controller okay 
so for using the identity in your application for authentication and authorization you have to use the these two methods which dotnet core by default provides when you install the identity in your application this is the sign in manager and second is the user manager what user manager is do user manager it will store the data in their own database user manager stores the data in their own database and as a cache part so it provides the services like you have to like creating creating the uh, like you are registering your registration form creating something okay so for this you are using the user manager for sign in manager sign in manager what it is exactly while you are logging in in your application logging out remember me you are using so for such type of functionality you have to use the sign in manager it has an n number of methods identity provides n number of methods by this you can easily use the identity in your application so here i have declared these properties then in the con controller i have injected these properties sign in manager and the user manager with this identity user class and then we will use as a these properties in a below methods like i have created a create user method for the create user method like suppose a registration form i have to use the i have created a model this is the registration view model and here i have user name suppose or the email the role that i want the password in the confirmed password and here you can see now this user manager has create async property if i go in this method here you can see in the user method uh, user manager we have these properties by this you can achieve your identity like add claim async add login async add to role async create async find by email async so this is the default methods that that you can directly use to create your to use your identity in your application the application Okay, I'm copying that part. That will be easy. Easy. Okay. so this is the uh, i have created a basic a uh, very simple registration form this is just a text box that i have and the labels that i have used so here i am just giving any name like suppose test test at the rate gmail.com and the password it by default check the password password if you go and type any of password it will give you error so you have to make sure you are using a restricted password so password okay i'm clicking on the registration it hits our method here you can see this is succeed 
it will give you a result as succeed. Okay, now I'm going to the database and to the ASP.NET users. Here you can see a new record is added with the unique ID, username, then normalize username and the password in the one way hash algorithm using the one way hash algorithm it is encrypted security stamp concurrency stamps and the other fields by this you can achieve your create your forms using identity now similarly if you want to do login then just simply pass this model in which you have the username and the password you are passing and you can manager dot find by email if email is available then it will go sign in manager dot password sign in async so it will log in your application and read it to your index page in the home controller if it is not correct the email id and password it will return you as the invalid login attempt so by this you nothing have to use the your business logic it will provide you everything their default methods that directly you can use for achieving your authentication authorization purposes so this is the default identity in your application in your dotnet core application and so by this you can achieve your 4k password uh, change password remember me change password etc you can do another is role based authentication if you want to do role based authentication you want to achieve like suppose here I have logged in in my application. Then I want to explore that this method. This is the uh, it will redirect after logging. It will redirect to this method. Okay, this action method. But it can be used by only the role by the who have the role dev. If it is admin, he cannot. So by this you can apply the role based authentication and give the use the attribute authorize and pass the roles any number of roles that you that uh, this method can use by this role or any anyone. So you can add the roles in it for the roles. This is the table ASP.NET roles. If I go and select this table here. This is my unique ID and the name of the role. Like suppose admin dev, you can add the roles here. And another, so if I go and write, ASP.NET is for roles table. Another, ASP.NET user is for user information. ASP.NET user roles is the link up of user and roles. By this you can identify which user has here you can see the user ID and the role ID user ID of this table ASP.NET users and role ID of this table. The role based authentication. Next claim based authentication. Claim based authentication basically like suppose you are logging from uh, any of application you have provided the username and the password. Now you are accessing another resource of your application another page of your application if it is if you are not a authentication uh, authorized user 
you are moving to the again to the login page. What claim based authentication will do? If you have passed the claim to that particular uh, token the by which you are doing the authentication, then it will hold in your whole application. So by this claim, you can access your application if you have passed the claim based authentication. It works as a cache in your application. So this is just a glimpse of claim based authentication. Identity, identity server single sign on what the functionality of identity server is like suppose uh, you have login with your application uh, you have application of your gmail okay you are login you have created the account and enter the password and the username and you are login with your gmail id now you have to login with the uh, you want to register in the facebook or the twitter then you have to again enter your username and the password the new password so you have to remember every time and log in it again and again if you want to access it so what identity server will do you have login with the gmail account then you have to use the same gmail account to log in the another application you don't need to enter the username and password again again so basically it is a technology which combines several different application login screens into one with single sign on you user only has to enter their login credentials username and the password one time only on a single page to access all your other application like facebook google uh, twitter or any other so by this you can use the single sign on uh, identity server uh, basically it has many providers you can use which is a paid tool so i can't show you the uh, demo on this because it is a paid tool uh, you can achieve this by the own identity server you can use the okta in your application oauth authentication you can use so these are the some methods by this you can achieve your single sign on in your application. Let me know if you have any question. Okay, so moving, I'm moving to the another part. Test cases uses using N unit last in the previous session i told you about the x unit it is similar as the x unit and the ms test only the difference is you have to use the different NuGet libraries like if i go in the doc here you have to install the three packages first and unit second n unit 3 test adapter micro and the third is microsoft.net.test.sdk you have to first install these three libraries in your application then another thing like in the ms test you have to decorate your class the test class with the test class and the method as the test method and in the x unit you have to use the fact keyword in your method in your action method but in the n unit you have to use the you have to decorate your class as the text fixer and the method with the test and rest is the same that you are doing with the ms test x unit rest is the same only thing you have to change the naked packages with the n unit one and the decorate the classes with the text fixture and the test one this is the basic uh, you have to use in your application although all is similar as the ms test and the x unit if you are familiar with this okay 
okay so now moving to the next part optimization optimization in dotnet code so basically there are many techniques by this you can optimize your dotnet core app in the uh, previous legacy application there are many performance issues which dotnet core already fixed that part by which we are using the dotnet core so some more recommendations by this you can more uh, efficiently uh, maintain your maintain the performance in your application like suppose you have to use the always use the latest versions of the asp.net core applications because it has many other features which uh, enhance the performance levels use the uh, async synchronization way in your application async await avoid using of synchronous in your application use of task not using the task dot await use the data caching of your application do some data caching in your application proper using of coding standards using the entity framework code first approaches data first approaches use the bundling and minification that we discussed in the previous session so that it will bundle your libraries your js your css class in a one so these are the some common tips you have to follow to optimize your dotnet core application or any uh, any of application use of uh, um, make sure you are using you are hitting very less uh, uh, database calls use of link queue in your application so these are the some tips you can optimize your dotnet core application next moving how you can host or publish your dotnet core app on your azure like here this is my app okay here i am just running this i am developing this app so i am running in my local this is my local now how you can host in your this application on the cloud everyone know like so you have to make sure you are using the azure for this so this is my azure account now first what steps you need to follow to how you can host your application on the azure make sure you are using because cloud provides many services to host your application so this is the app service you have to first create the app service so this is the create web app you have to given the some details this is my subscription this is the test group uh, resource group resource group is the collection of the groups like suppose you are containers this will act as a container or the file groups in which you are uh, storing your information just behave like a collection resource group now i'm giving up the name of my app this is already available tech hub app okay now it is available you can publish your application by the code or the docker container you are selecting the region that is central us here there are number of regions available and this is the sku and the size according to this it will charge you Okay, there are some validations fail okay this is the runtime slack so we are using the dotnet core 2.1 application review and create
it will take some time it will start here you can see it is submitted to deployment deployment is in progress it takes few minutes to uh, create your application here yes it is almost created your deployment is complete you can pin this on your dashboard as well now this is the app that we have created and this is the url of the application this is the url i have copied this currently there is nothing in in this now how you can connect with your application you have to first download this get published profile you have download this in this you have the uh, your complete accessibility that how you can connect with your application now you have download this now i'm stopping this make sure your build is succeed in your main application just right click click on publish app service import profile in the download select this one and open and create and while you click on the publish it will publish your profile uh, publish your application that i will not do then if you scroll this one your old local app come to this on to the internet so by this way you can host your application your dotnet core application in your in the azure cloud server so i am deleting this one any doubt in this guys okay so moving to the next part some tfs setup so uh, as we all know uh, tfs setup tfs server provided by our companies so i can't show you the demo on this due to some securities but i will give you some tips that how you can do the tfs setup so here you can see this is my visual studio and here you can connect your application so uh, so here this is the um, there is no team okay in the team explorer this is the manage connection sign you have to click this one and then add your application and add your server by this you can add your server while you done with your server the sign is show is here when you are successfully connected with your server it will show that it is checked in or check out with the red mark you can select and see the there there will be a pending changes source control i hope you all know about the tfs i will not go in the deep dig into the tfs i'm moving to the next part that is git one that i will show you the demo as well on the git that how you can use the git in your application so first first you have to do you have to create the account on the github git sign up on the git form so i already have the account so i have logged in it you can sign up and create your own account and create the first repository here 
like suppose this is my repository you can create your own repositories here you can see all the repositories your repositories so these are my here i have two repositories where i can check in the code if i go in this one you can directly download the code here as well download the zip that will not link up to your application if you want to if you want to use the git now okay to check in check out your code and link up with your application so first what you have to do you have to install the git bash so download this one so while you are done with the this setup it will show you like i if i go in my desktop and right click here here you can see it will show you a link as this one get bash here so suppose i want to clone this project i'm going into the d drive creating the new project and creating name as demo okay and here i'm right clicking okay so make sure first git is case sensitive everything should be in small this is my version name git version name now i am going to here in the doc i have added all the commands all the daily life commands that you need to do with the git so first i am adding the server so this is the command git add server just give me a minute guys adding or you can add directly git clone path of this one just copy this one and paste copy paste it will start cloning your application now here you can see in the demo folder a project is added here you can see this is the git file which is added close this one and again open it will open as a branch with the command get branch minus a here you can see you will get all the branches which which is available on your local and your remote remoting that is on the github so these are the two branches is available git uh, master branch and the development branch currently we we are in the master branch so like suppose i want to switch it to the development branch so git checkout branch name develop here you can see now you have switched to the development branch if you want to again then just copy and paste this command with the branch name now if you want to branch git checkout minus p and like suppose uh, i want to create a so new branch is created if i write the command now it is here this is a new branch tech hub okay so by this you can create your 
branches and switch to your branches nice now suppose you have make changes in your application so i'm closing this one and opening this demo project which we have cloned and i'm making some changes in the application uh, let's suppose i have added this one i'm moving to this this status here you can see it will show you a file this one cron dot js and as a red mark so now you have to by the git status you can see all the pending changes in your uh, that is that you have did okay in the by the red color now you have to add this file i am selecting p and paste so by this git add command you can add this file in your local in the file system if you want to add like suppose there are multiple files and you want to add all the files just add the git add dot so it is this file is added now i want to commit this file git commit minus m minus m means message this is the test okay now i have added this file now in this status now there is no file is available now it is committed by the command git commit it is committed to your local now you want to push this to your remote server so git push and your it will push the data to your remote so if i play refresh this tag hub had had recent push less than a minutes ago so here you, here you can see this is the active branch I have made changes just a minute ago. This is the comment. Here you can see. I have added this one. So by this, you can simply do some check in, check out in your application. If you want to pull the changes from the remote server, use the command git pull origin and the branch name. i can explain you uh, some commands more okay so by the git minus minus version you can check the git version git branch minus a you will get all the branches local plus remote by the command git branch you will get only the local branches if you are running the command git config minus minus global user dot email if you want to change your email then you you have to use this configuration email command if you want to change your name then you have to use this command git config minus minus global user dot name command if you want to change your u user name globally then you have to use this command if you want to list your all configurations then use this okay uh git checkout branch for switching that i have sh all just show you git checkout minus f f means forcefully if if it is not switching means sometimes it gives you a error like uh, it is not going to switch then just use the attribute minus f force by this you can easily switch your 
or check in your commands using minus b you you are creating the new branch and use that new branch hit check out dot if you want to delete all the changes from your branch get reset if you want to undo your yeah, unstage your changes get minus minus help by this you will see all the commands get status you are you can able to see the all the local changes with the red flag get diff if you run the git diff command like suppose This is my file. And it, it. It, will, it will show you the changes because I have one file. I have not mentioned any file. So it will show you this is the previous change and this is the new change. If you add this file and one more thing, like if you add this file, copy and paste. now it is show you show you in the green format that means it is added file this file is added git push command git merge command git stash command while you are pulling the changes from the remote server sometimes it gives you a error conflicts because more teams are working on it then you have to apply the git stash. Then git stash apply to resolve the conflicts. Remove file if you want to remove the changes, remove the files. Get log if you want to see the logs. So these are the very basic commands that you are going when you are working with the git. You, you should know about these commands. So git is basically a version control by this you can check in or check out your code pull push your codes to the remote on the local server. The main uh, the in the interview in the, in the interview uh, sometime interviewer ask about the what is the main difference between the pull and fetch commands git pull and git fetch both are look similar. But the only difference is while you are using git pull command, it will pull, it will download your new data from the remote server and also integrate with your local files. Local files means with your project, with your files, it will integrate. But if you are using git fetch command, it will only download the data, new data from your server, remote server, but it will not integrate the in integrate it with the local files that is the main difference with between the git pull and the git fetch some use case about the git sometimes it will give you like uh, here you can see unable to create the command another git process seems to be run running in this repository so what you have to do in this case it will lock your git repository so just go into the git folder this one and here there will be a new file is created index.locked file so you have to you have to remove this file index.log so by this again you are able to run your get commands if you face any conflict then go and check this your git is logged or not so this is the use case while you are working with the uh, git or oh, any question guys